folks, welcome to Calvin's Got Game. I'm Calvin. I'm Lewis. And today we are going on with our series of games that are light, medium, and heavy games for a certain mechanic Mm -hmm. or a certain genre of games. And today we're doing worker placement. I had to look at my notes. I couldn't remember what it was. (laughs) Worker placement games. So we're going to give you... Uh, Lewis is going to give you one. I'm going to give you one, or I may start first this time. Uh, yeah. I'm going to give you one. Lewis will give you one of a lightweight game, a medium weight game, and a heavyweight game. Now, the way we uh, did that was our light games are anywhere from zero to two, mm-hmm. and our medium weight games are 2.1 to three, and our heavy games are 3.1 to five. five. Yep. And so when you start getting up into that, the game start getting a little more, and we, when we say weight of game, we're talking about how uh, heavy the game is as far as how much time you have to learn the rules, uh, how much mechanics it has, things like that, that may be a little more than just for your uh, just average game. Yes. Right. It was going to work your mind a little bit more on right. this game. Right. So, Lewis, how did you, uh, I mean, I kind of just, just said how we made the list, but how, how did you go about making your list or picking that? Actually, what she was doing. Actually, went to BGG, looked up the games um, that I had played, not really owned, just played. Yes. Uh, and see if uh, I just went down by page. As soon as I saw it, and I go, okay, I know that one. That one I played a lot, a lot, or just placed enough times. I bought it down, and yeah. And so where it uh, fell in heavy, medium, or light on this. Okay. Where I went a little bit different than what Lewis did is I, I, I mean, kind of did the same thing. I went in, I put in the weight of the game in BGG. I put zero to one, I mean, zero to two. And I said all games, and I looked at every game that was in there. And so I picked out the ones that I know I, I played, and I wrote them down. And then out of that group, I kind of did a comparison of which one I'd rather play. Um, and then I'll pick I'll pick that one as my lightweight game or medium weight game or heavyweight game. So I kind of did a little bit more in depth, I guess, if you can say that. I, um, it was just a process that I used, um, and I, I feel it gives me a better uh, grasp. And I also tried to pick games that were not on my top 100 because you hear about those all the time. Yes. My favorite game, this that, and the other. So I try to I try to pick game I tried to pick games that possibly were not now. I may not succeed because that game may be something I really, really enjoy playing, and it's one of the heavyweight games that I play. I don't play a lot of heavyweight games, so and so that may be one of the choices there. So with all that, anything else you want to add? Oh no, that one. So with anything else there, let's get started with telling you to subscribe. Yes, (laughs) I forgot to say that. Hey, subscribe to this channel, guys. I need you. Um, I want to hit 500 before the end of the year, before uh, December 31st. And if I can hit that 500, I'm going to buy a board game, and I'm going to give it away to one of you that have subscribed to my channel. Uh, I'm not going to give it away to a random person, but if you are subscribed, you will be entered into the uh, drawing without even having to do anything. Huh. I'll just randomly, you know, it'll be put into a random generator, all your all your uh, screen names, or I'll write them and put them on a in a ticket or into a bowl. And I'll just pick them out. Lewis and I will do that, and uh, you guys will get a one of you will get a free game, uh, a brand spanking new game. So, but before I probably purchase the game, I'll probably put out a video of asking you to, hey, what game would you like? Now you have to understand this is coming out of my pocket. Yeah, you know, um, I don't have sponsors. I don't have. Board game companies sending me some of their games. Wish I did, but I don't. I mean, I have had in the past some. Um, and I've had some people send me a game to say, hey, can you tell me what you think of this game? Uh, and not necessarily make a video of it, but they want to kind of, hey, what's your opinion of this game before I try to continue making the game? And I've done that, and I actually give them, I actually graded them on some sheets that I had about things. And I don't know if you were in that, Lewis, but... Um, it was not too long ago, and uh, had a great time doing that. They said it was great information, and they enjoyed the feedback. So, uh, with all that being said, I'm not asked for people to send me anything or anything like that. Uh, just know that the board game will come out of my pocket, and I'm not a big channel. 
uh, for giveaways like that, but I do want to do something for the folks that get me to 500. Yes. And, and those that have been around for a while. So I appreciate you guys. All right, so my first lightweight game, let's get into this, is called The River. It's 1.97 weight. It's right there at the two. It's by Days of Wonder, 2018 game, two to four players, 30 to 45 minutes to play, and it's ranked 2,585 on BGG. Now, in the river, it is, a, of course, it's a worker placement game. You are putting tiles. You're going out to these spots to do things, and you're putting to earn tiles, and you're putting them on your board in a, in a river. It kind of goes along like a river, kind of flows like an S, right? And so when you're putting them down, you want to make sure that you're putting certain landscapes in the columns down the river because that's how you score more points. And so as you build your settlement, uh, your town, whatever you want to call it, around the river, some of your workers will settle down in those towns. Once you get to a certain point, you'll lose a worker. So now the workers you have have to work even harder to grow your town. It's a simple little game. It's not hard. Like I said, it takes, what, uh, 30 to 45 minutes. And for a worker placement game, that's pretty fast. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of analysis paralysis. Uh, the game flows really well. The pieces are nice. The artwork's nice. It's a nice game. I like it. That's why the river is my pick for a lightweight game. I've seen it on um, YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it. Um, we, we'll explain, but I never see the playthrough on that one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, folks, I do see a lot of games on YouTube. I, that's my resource on how to play these games. <laughs> and researching new games that I haven't played. Yeah. If, I, if somebody mentions a game, I so will have to check that out and see how it plays. And if it interests me. Um, my uh, number uh, one, no particular, my first one. Your lightweight game. Yeah, lightweight game. Thank you. Lightweight You're welcome. Game. <laughs> we're going to remind you where we're at. <laughs> it's uh, Tokint. Sorry for the mispronunciation. Tokaido. Tokaido. Uh, a 2012 game. Publisher Fun Forge. Two to five players. About 45 minutes to play. It weights 1.74. Very simple game. Very simple. You are at one end of the board. You got to get to the other end of the board. But you are exploring the countryside of Asia. You traveling on the spice road of Asia. As you travel through there, you get to stop certain places, collect certain resources, uh, and then move on. Every now and then, you got to uh, go to a inn to sleep and collect certain rewards. But the trick here is, you go depending where you are. If you are at the end, you go first. Mm -hmm. If you're in the first spot, you go last. Hmm. So you got to be careful where you place your worker or your traveler, your traveler, because depending where you place them, depends when you go, uh, when you go to the next round. And it's... When everybody goes to the first round, we see where everybody is, then that's how I decide who goes first in the next round. It's a, not a push your luck game, but it's more of a work placement because you are putting your worker, doing things, and depending on where you place them, depending on where you go next. Right, right. It's like it, it's like that. Uh, it's a catch-up mechanism. Yes. Uh, because if you're out front and I'm behind you, I still get to go. Yes. So until I pass you, yes. and then it'll be your turn. Yeah, I like that game a lot. It's very peaceful. It's it a, is. It's a peaceful game. And the cards, if uh, you collect, if you flip them over, has some nice artwork that you actually can put them together. Yeah, you make a painting. Painting on there. But yeah, uh, for lightweight, Takedo is my choice. Yeah, I like that game. I don't own it. Um, I played it once or twice. It's just a mellow game, man. You're yeah. like zen, you know, when you're playing it. Hey, I'm going down this path, you know, checking out the waterfalls and, you know, whatever. I like it. It's a good game. My medium weight game is Lost Ruins of Arnak. And Lost Ruins of Arnak is a Chech game. It's 
weight is 2.92 on BGG. It's a 2020 game, one to four players, 30 to 120 minutes to play, and rank number 28 on BGG. Now, Lost Ruins of Arnak is a great game. If you haven't played it, I mean, people compare it to Dune Imperium, and if you like Dune Imperium, you'll probably like Lost Ruins of Arnak. If you like Lost Ruins of Arnak, you'll like Dune Imperium. But if you own one and don't own the other, I think you're missing out. I own both. Uh, both of them serve a different theme for me. Yep. And a different... Um, I enjoy it uh, that... Um, yep. I enjoy that theme of exploration. <laughs> like a, whoo, man, senior <laughs> moment, folks. Um, I like the theme of like being an explorer like an Indiana Jones. I like that more than the space theme. I do like Dune Imperium a lot. Uh, but in Lost Ruins of Arnak, like I said, you're out there exploring. You only get two explorers. Make, is it two or three? Two. 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 Way too few, right? Which is aggravating to me because I can't do everything I want to do. You're trying to move up on this track with your research and your journal. And if you don't have all the stuff you need, you can't move up fast enough. You can't go out and collect resources because you only got two dudes and they ain't doing enough. They need to work some overtime. And they don't work overtime because they're union. Um, so, <laughs> so it's hard to get everything done you want to do, right? So, um, But I like Lost Ruins of Arnett. You get to fight monsters. You get to explore you're moving up those tracks, like I talked about. You get to buy items and artifacts that help you along the way to do certain things. Um, just a fantastic game. I don't know what else to say about it. And if you hadn't played it, you should. So that's my medium weight game, Lost Rune of Arnak. Um, I do have something to say about that, but I'm going to wait on that one. Well, you can say whatever you want. Because <laughs> I like it. My medium game is one uh, rec you recently played okay. with me. Uh, it is... Flamecraft. Oh, you taught it to me a couple Sundays ago. Yes. Uh, 20, 20, uh, 2022 game, uh, cardboard alchemy game uh, publisher, one to five players, 60 minutes to play. Its weight is 2.18 uh, 2 right. on the weight. You are a little dinosaur in this shopping, uh, not shopping center, but a little shopping village area. Mm -hmm. And you're going around from each little uh, shopping area collecting resources as you collect resources you are uh, getting little gold cards that you can e either improve uh, a shop or improve your standing where you are uh, you get to get uh, more dragons to put uh, get more stuff out you because each time you get these improvement uh, cards to improve the shop, you get to probably also gain a dragon or gain mm -hmm. a gold card that adds for points then or at the end of the game. But it's a nice little uh, for, uh, game that is really not take you that uh, take that game. No, it's no. not. It's a uh, more going. Oh, you there? Okay, I give you one of my. Because if you land on uh, a shop, go to a shop that's another dragon there, you have to give one of your resources to that uh, player. If you go to those three players, you have to give one resource to each of those players. So that's kind of a little bit take that, but not much. You get to choose where you want to go. Yeah. Um, but it's a nice, easy leisure game, too. Yeah. You can relax and play it, and it's fun. You... A fun little game. Uh, it is timed by going. You have two stacks. When one of those stacks runs out, the dragon stack or the uh, I forgot what's called uh, the gold stack. Mm -hmm. I call it. One of those stacks runs out, the game ends, and then you add up your scores uh, from your end score games or um, where uh, anything else that you might have that will give you a point. Mm -hmm. But it's a nice little leisure yeah, game on there. I do have all the upgrades on this game. Uh, yeah, he's got to have all the fancy bits. <laughs> this is actually one of the few games that I actually bought the fancy stuff. Ah. It's just nothing wrong with what it comes with. What it comes with is all you need. But some uh, gamer like myself for this one is I need the fancy stuff. 
Yeah, he needed the princess pile because that's what that is. No, it, <laughs> the, but the bits are really cool, I must say. Uh, the bits are nice. Uh, they made a nice addition and look to the game. For yes. Sure. And I didn't know much about uh, Flamecraft when, when I mean, I've seen it, never played it. So when, when uh, what's your name again? Lewis. <laughs> When, I'm telling you, it's senior moments are getting me. When Lewis brought it over, I was like, man, I'm excited to play it. And I, I played it, and it, was, it wasn't it was quite what I thought it was, but I liked it a lot. Um, the resources really come in. You get yes. a lot of resources if you go to certain places. And that whole thing, if it's in a two-player game, we really didn't have much problem about going somewhere where we had to get somebody resource every now and then. But it wasn't near as bad. I can see in a three- or four-player game where that might make an issue. Uh, or a five-player game, however many it goes up to. Um, I can see where there would be an issue. But I like the game quite a bit, actually. I probably won't buy it because Lewis owns it, and he's got all the really cool bits. You know, he's got all the... He's the guy with the new uh, uh, Schwinn bicycle <laughs> in the neighborhood, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, he's got all the bits, and, and I'll just play. I'll play with him when he plays it. So good choice, Lewis. I like that one oh, a lot. Thank you. Well, you're so welcome, <laughs> All right, so my heavyweight game. This is the one that it's a slog. You're going to have to, I mean, it's an enjoyable game, but you're going to have to really work at this game. And it's called Caverna the Cave Farmer. Um, it's 3.78. It's by Lookout Games. 2013 game, one to seven players, 30 to 120 minutes to play, ranked 49th on BGG. So I'm not the only one that likes it, right? Uh, in Caverna the Cave Farmer, you have your own farm, you have your own cave. So you can buy rooms for your cave, you can put them in, uh, you can make uh, coal mines or ore mines, I think it's ore, but anyway. You can buy caves that produce that, you can buy rooms and beds because you can't have kids without putting beds in your house. So there are ways to make more workers. Uh, you can just, there's many ways to score in this game. You can farm, and you can raise sheep, pigs, horses, cows, and I think you even get a dog. So, but you have to fence them off, and you can raise crop, I believe. I can't remember. But anyway, there's other things that you can do to raise money. You can go adventuring, so you got to get weapons to be able to go adventuring, to be able to do things and discover more stuff. Uh... And there's a lot of things, just a lot of stuff. Um, and then in each section, there's some kind of scoring deal. You know, they're in, in turn order. There's a place where it comes to where you score or something. Um, it's been a while since I played it. I hadn't got it out. It's a booger to set up. Yes, sir. It's a little bit timely to set up but and to tear down. But once you get it set up, once you start playing it, uh, if, as long as no one gets analysis paralysis, which I think that 30, it says it was 30 minutes per player. I think it's probably more like 40 to 45 minutes per player because there's just so much to do. Mm -hmm. So much that's your opportunity to do, right? You could do this, you could do that, you can get this, you can get that. Um, so you're trying to figure out what's going to best benefit you. I love the game a lot. That's why Caverna, the cave farmer, is my heavyweight game, and I enjoy it a lot. Never played it. Sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to play it. Well, it, It's one of those games where you, you can't sit down for an hour because it's going to take you at least 10 to 15 minutes to set the thing up, right? So you're going to have to do that. And then you start explaining it. By the time you get it played, we're three hours in, right? <laughs> so it's one of those you're going to have to sit down uh, on a day that you don't have anything going on and just play it. Mm -hmm. Now, once you understand it, it doesn't take that long, right? Once we've done it once, it wouldn't take that long. Mm -hmm. My heavyweight game. Actually, is 3.12. You say, actually. <laughs> it is... So you're saying your your website is different than mine. No. All right, go, I'm just it's kidding. the same website. All right, go ahead. But my heavyweight is weighs 3.12. All right. And there's a reason for that. Yeah. 2021 game... Chex Games Edition Publisher, one to, th one to four players, 30 to uh, 120 minutes. It is The Lost Ruins of Arnak, The Expansion Leaders. 
So you're adding in the expansion leaders yes. with Lost Rooms to make it a heavyweight game. Yes. Well, right. I mean, and, that and makes it, it a heavyweight game. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes that it a heavyweight game. Yes. Not that you did it just to make it a heavyweight game, but that makes mm-hmm. it more, yeah. more heavy. Okay. Yes. And this is a game that I don't know. I have played it. I, uh, I want to get both parts to actually play it. That's what, and I'm saving that for that. Um, because it makes the game not more friendlier to play, but it gives you more options to do stuff when if, like your case, and which a lot of folks do talk about, they just don't have enough uh, meeples to put out to get the stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, excuse me. Um, the expansion leaders uh, allows you to do stuff that you mostly can't do on your turn. There's one that uh, allows you to put a third uh, player out mm-hmm. on your turn. There's one uh, leader that allows you to take one back and then put it back out. There's mm-hmm. one that has a little bird. I think it's a hawk, correction. A hawk. That's not a little bird. I know. Not. <laughs> Tweety's a little bird. A hawk is not a little bird. <laughs> it's either a hawk or an eagle yeah. that it, if you don't do nothing with it, the first couple of rounds, it actually keeps uh, moving up. The higher it goes on this his path, the more of a reward you get back. Mm, okay. But you have to be careful because it counts for when it's, you put a meeple out, it moves up. So you put your two meeple out, it moves up twice. But there's just so much, uh, there's only a uh, few turns you have the whole game right because there's a marker that goes up at the end of every turn uh what's that wand at the yeah, top the, wand. The, yeah. The, the staff yes so if you really want the great reward you're gonna have to be patient and just use your two meeples you have and get what you can each round but you have that you have one that actually allows you to get those cards that are evil cards that come uh, against you, point, point oh, wise. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, the fear. Yeah, the fear cards. There's one um, ex- uh, leader that uses those uh, fear cards to defeat uh, the monsters on the board. You don't need resources at all. Ah. You just go, okay, uh, how many resources? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, there, I'm done. That a monster is mine now. All right. So it allows you to do stuff that most all, most times you can't with only two meeples. So it just gives you that little bit of extra. <clears throat> yes. So that's why Lost Ruins of Arnak Expansion Leaders is uh, my heavyweight game because it ups the game a little bit to for those folks that don't feel like they can do everything. This gives them a chance. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's an example of where a, and this is where sometimes my wife has an issue with expansions, right? Mm-hmm. You'll get, a, you have a game that she likes to play, and you add in an expansion that makes it more difficult, or it gives it something different that she doesn't like. And here's an example of a game, Lost Ranger Varnack. It was a mid-weight game. Yes, it was. And you add the expedition leaders in, and then it becomes a heavyweight game. Which is not a bad thing. No, it's not. Not a bad thing at all. And I, I think I would probably enjoy it. I haven't played it with the Expedition Leaders, and I'd like to. Uh, I haven't done that. But there's another game. There's a lot of games out there you don't feel like you have enough turns or enough workers to do what you want. And one of those is Everdale. Everdale is one. And we played a game the other night that was kind of like that, and I can't remember what it was. But you just don't feel like you can do everything that you want to do. I can't right. remember what it was. Anyway, but they're out there. So, anything you want to say to wrap this thing up, Lewis? Uh, nothing more, I guess. It's going to be interesting for when we go forward on like our heavyweight games on the next category because we might have some that we might not have a heavyweight mm-hmm. or a heavy uh, category or a light category because... They yeah. may be just medium or heavy games, yes. you know. So, But we're going to try to continue this on with the theme of, of what's going on with that. And if you guys like this, hey, tell us what your favorite light and medium weight game is yes. in the worker placement uh, genre. Um, and we'll go from there. Guys, I appreciate y'all so much for watching the video. And I, I have a great time with Lewis doing these videos. And I hope you guys have a great time watching them. 
Um, I hope Lewis has a great time coming over and doing it. I do. So, of course, so, of course I do. You, he shows up all the time, so he <laughs> must, right? But I, I do appreciate him coming and, and working these videos out with me. And I'm glad he's officially part of the channel. He's got his shirt. He's smiling. Look at that. You can't beat that right there. Uh, I was happy to get that done for him. I'm glad he's part of the channel and he's going to be continued on the channel. And like I said, he's welcome to come to a video. I'll be glad to record it. Uh, whatever he needs, uh, he's welcome to, to do that. All right, guys, get a board game to the table. Spend time with your friends and your family. And I do thank you for watching Calvin's Got Game.